face that this world has forgotten. Ooh, what is up, you guys? And of course, welcome back to another episode of Who Was Really Better? And this time we have yet again another Alolan versus regular form matchup beat, of course, the Nine Hills versus the Alolan Night Hills, which of course introduced in this generation. And of course, regular Night Hills from the actually first generation has been a long time in the making. And while the regular Nine Hills has been a stature of weather teams in general, but of course, the draw in mind have been kind of due to a stature in that really, really, really impressive. But has, of course, um, lost in its viability due to, of course, shards are why we introduced. But here comes, of course, an upgrade being, of course, the Lowland Nine Tails, and now Eyes is now the factor. So, one really is, of course, going to look at these two as critically as I can and see in the end of this video if the upgrade really is better than, of course, the original. And in the end of this video, that we are, of course, going to find out of who is really better. So first and foremost, what we're going to talk about is, of course, their stat distribution. And this is because Alolan Pokemon in general do not get a bigger change in their stat distribution. They are very, very much alike, uh, with only a few fixtures in general. So the regular Ninetales and Alolan Ninetales have the exact same HP, Defense, Special Defense, of course, 73, 75, and 100. So pretty much average defenses. Special Defense is definitely a bit on the high side, but it's not by any chance of manipulation due to, of course, its HP. Um, scarier or hard to be, of course, dealing with, if any way, of the many nation here. But what I do, of course, share is, of course, also a special attack, which is very like lustring, considering what these Pokemon are used for and really are, which, of course, are heavy damage output. So it's definitely our other things that does make them, of course, scarier than that special attack. And, of course, one really has, of course, to talk about the things that do change here. Ninetales, the regular one, has a higher attack stat, being, of course, 76 versus 67. But those losses in attack that Lola Ninetales does get is put on its speed being a 109 instead of 100 on regular Ninetales. So stat distribution wise, I would say that Alola Ninetales is smarter distributed because it gets a really, really strong speed tier that does make it a bit more viable for a lot of more matchups. And it's important for it because the typings that they do share are vastly different and uh, the competition and offensive pressure that these are facing are vastly different due to it. So being stronger in speeds are definitely a very, very, very relevant. So with their stats out of the way, now of course gonna look at their typing. Now here's the thing with of course Real Nine Tails, it's a soul fire type. Fire type in general are actually not that bad. There are a few weaknesses here that are common, but fire does resist a whole lot of things. Well of course resists the bug, fairy, fire itself, grass, ice, and steel. Well of course with ground rock and water so we are weak to of course two types of priority we are weak to rocks but of course fire type in general is in my honest opinion not as bad as the typing if those issues are resolved with the team synergy but as a whole nine tail is not as complex of course for fire type but it's good to know that primarily its resistances are mostly of course on the special side you know of course fairy Grass, nice, and they can definitely be dealt with. Well, of course, it weakness is kind of for Billion, of course, it does deal with its defensive capabilities, of course, ground and rock. So, yeah, not a bad timing combination, but it's still not as impressive either. Now, going into, of course, the Lowland Ninetales, which is called the Fairy Ice Typing, and we can see this in two ways. It's either a good defensive ice type or it's a bad defensive fairy type because the combination itself is not necessarily that bad. Fairy typing in general are better as a soul fairy, while ice type alone really are dependent on a secondary type and to be more defensively inborn because ice type is a general bad defensive typing, while like very, very good offensive typing. So we have of course a dragon immunity, we have of course this is a bug, dark ice, but are we to fire, poison, rock and steel? Actually very weak to steel, you know, because a bullet punch can actually one shot you. But still weak to rocks, which is the primary issues that the boat are facing. Being hazard weeks are never necessarily a good thing. But as of course, this typing itself is very clear that Alolan Ninetales has a lot of weaknesses to be dealing with and hasn't necessarily all the best type of immunity. While immunity to Ives is a very good since it's fairly rare. Being resistant to of course Bug, Dark and Dragon is not necessarily helping a whole lot. The only thing they could possibly be dealing with is called a combination of, of course, Dragon and Dark, but they usually will be carrying Flash Cannon or Heavy Slam. 
but as a standhold, I do believe that regular Nikles is stronger because fire type resistances are that much more relevant for its typing itself. But it also should be mentioned that this still had the same type of switching issues, even though Nikles is necessarily better in this kind of environment, it still isn't solving a whole lot for it either. But as a whole, their typing and their stat distribution makes them fairly average at best, probably average below really. So what makes these Pokemon viable? Well, their abilities, they're only as viable as their abilities makes them out to be, and that's because one of the strongest weather setters in the game. With average stat, with a strong weather setting, they become a bit better than they should be. And starting with the regular Ninetales, who has actually got a fairly bad rumor since Generation 6 was started mainly because Charles of Y is also a drawed Pokemon against that that emotion, but one really has to consider Ninetales is a very very good fire type due to draw itself, being of course boosting in fire type damage move with 50%, being able to actually spam possible solar beams, and of course lose the weakness to of course water for neutral damage onto it. So as a whole, Ninetales is a very very strong Pokemon due to this ability, but is mostly famous for right now, sadly, for Flash Fire and PU, which made it a rather lackluster in Pokemon. As I said here, its viability is definitely in bond with Drought. Uh, can utilize Drought is very, very average. The same thing goes for Alola Ninetales, so had it only been able to use Snow Cloak, it probably wouldn't be as interesting as it is right now, because Snow Warning really racks up. It's a very, very strong ability. Being able to, of course, spam blisters, even with that low special attack, you're still able to do the actually strongest ice type damage in the game, which is very, very, very scary. And other than that, of course, we have Slush Rushers, you can definitely capitalize on that. And also, you know, Snow Heal and Aurora Veal, which of course is the light screen reflect combination for a few turns. So it's both of these Pokemon are really, really strong because they are having a weather effect that they can benefit really, really easily from. They're actually basically built for this kind of environment and they do it really, really well. So when it comes to between them in their ability, I would say it's a tie because it's very, very, very much in bond with how much uh, they can do under it and the team support they can do share with it. But as a whole, I do believe Sun is slightly stronger than Hail, mainly because of the resistance that they can bond for other fire types. But at the same time, Aurora Veal is a very, very strong player, and this is something that Alolan Nitals does really well. So with that said, we have to, of course, talk about their move pool. Now, they have a few moves that they do share that does help their viability quite a lot, and it solves pretty much the same issues for both of them. You know, of course, as stated here, they have a low special attack, and they actually get access to Calm Mind and Nasty Plot, and that is very, very important, because that stature not necessarily the most strong on the special attack side, so being a special defensive Pokemon comes in, they usually force out, but they also get both Psyshock being able to hit that heavily also. They also get Hypnosis, Disable, and it can get access to the likes of Dark Pulse and uh, Dream Meters when I capitalize on that. But that is pretty much where it all ends. They all both get Hex 2, which could be useful, but not mostly of the time not really. So with that said, we're going to actually talk about what they do, of course, differentiate about. We're going to talk with, of course, Alolan Nitals first, mainly because it was introduced this generation, which means this move pool is uh, actually um, a lot less than, of course, the seven generations in the making of Nitals. Now, Alolan Nitals has a very, very strong move pool in general. It does get one of the best dual stabs combination, being, of course, access to like a Moonblast, Dash like Gleam, and, of course, Blistered Ice Beam, and even Freeze Strike. Freeze Strike is primarily what you want to use on this Pokemon, mainly because it means that you can hit Pokemon that aren't necessarily weak to Ice but with Water types. So, bulky Water types are not a switch in against Alolan Nitals because of Freeze Strike, which makes hits on super effectively anyway, and Pokemon such as Swampers are definitely scared out due to that reason alone. Uh, it also gets access to Ice Shot. While it doesn't sound like much, it's still a priority move, and it can be capitalized on. But what makes Alolan Nitals really, really scary is the access to Aurora Veal. Alolan Nitals is the only Pokemon that can have Hail at the same time that it can set up an Aurora Veal. What I mean by that is that due to Snow Warning, it can turn one actually just set up that kind of screen in motion, and as stated before, due to is a rather bad typing combination defensively. Being able to at least get defensive is a very, very strong um, character move from, of course, Alolan Nitals, and definitely racks up his viability due to that reason alone. Hail might be one of the worst abilities in the game, but being able to do just that makes Alolan Nitals one of the scariest Pokemon in the game to be dealing with due to its defensive capabilities just really, really helps the team a whole lot. 
But that is pretty much where it all ends. It doesn't have the broadest offensive move pool, but as I said before, it has a relevant move to coverage at least most of the matchups outside of steel types. And that can easily be destroyed, of course, in the power of fire if you want to capitalize on that, but usually you don't need to. So with the Ice Queen done with one real let's talk about of course the Fire Demon that is the regular Ninetales. Now regular Ninetales as statue before has a lot of generations before it that should make it a lot more viable. But it doesn't learn a whole lot, it definitely doesn't become more interesting due to the previous generation. What it does get though is of course Fire Blast, Flamethrower and Flare Blaze to capitalize on that poor attack set. But in general due to Draught these becomes really 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 strong move but the reason I mentioned draw is because it does learn solar beam making of course it able to be spamming 120 base attack grass move against a Pokemon that could wall possible fire damage from it being of course rock types and water types so with that said it also gets a will-o-wisp combination it also gets um, overheat and capitalized and already powerful strong sun in mind but a few things it does learn from previous generation because that's pretty much it. It goes to get energy balls of lag if you want to spam solar beam at all. But it gets foul play and pain split from previous generation. These are really, really strong move. And as stature, it can be possibly defensive, which does kind of help it out. But that's pretty much it. Like I said, it's really not a whole lot that makes it more interesting than a Lola Ninetales. But what it gets are very, very strong move on the defensive side, of course being able to deal with possible things that could wall it out. So as a whole, it's very clear that these two are really, really just as good as their ability making them out to be, as I said previously. And this is really what is the only perk they got. They have a lot of things involved with that ability that makes them really strong due to it. Alola Ninetales can be defensively super, super incredible due to Aurora really might, but regular Ninetales has a smarter and well around this move pool while free strike doesn't solve a lot for lower nitals it doesn't solve anything and that really is what's holding it back because regular nitals can deal with any matchup it's forced to be of course dealing with but it lacks the speed to pull it off and this is something that i really really have to talk about with cortical consideration in mind which one does matter the most in the end and if you ask me that, I'm going to say this, and this is definitely going to be a, a split decision for anyone who watches this. But in my honest opinion, due to Sun being in regular right now the stronger ability overall, I really have to say, and surprisingly enough going into this video, that the regular Ninetales is in my honest opinion the better one, because it does resolve more issues than Hale is doing for a Lola Ninetales, and in the end of the day, that is what you want. Don't get me wrong on this though. Alola Ninetales is a very very good Pokemon overall. Aurora Veal is defensively super super scary. But it is basically what it does. It is a very very good capitalizing move for other Pokemon to work. Because as a standalone Pokemon, it is pretty average. Regular Ninetales is also pretty average. But it does get a damage boost in the sun. And it has a better easily offensive... Um, ability to kind of capitalize on of course its move pool better and um, being able to resolve its biggest issue with of course water type that can wall regular nine tails is a very very strong perk alola nine tails biggest issue is steel type and it has yet to resolve just that hidden power can only resolve so much and um, i really really think the viability of these two pokemon would change had to get access to the lives of earth power one could really hope for upcoming generation and that would of course change and if so so will my decision on this matchup be because I do believe a lot of Ninetales due to being able to set up Aurora Reveal has a stronger, easily combination than a regular Ninetales. But synergy-wise, the regular Ninetales sadly has to be the stronger here because Sun is that much better than Hale at this video are being made, of course. So with that said, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode and I hope you guys understand my reasoning behind this. Uh, they're both a super, super incredibly Pokemon. Um, definitely with, as I said before, their abilities to set up one of the best sets weather in the game. They are definitely built for doing just this, and they are really just as strong as the ability makes them out to be. Throw out their ability to set up a weather, and they are pretty average at best. It pretty much lack lustring due to its offensive poor uh, stats in general. So with that, guys, from course, as always, so much watching, and check out next week's episode where we will be looking at these guys.